This is game two of our best of three series between Five Anchors, No Captain, and Evil Corporation for Star Ladder I League Invitational Season 4 European Qualifier. I'm Basekip joining you once again, and joining me once again is Lumi as we head into our game two draft. Lumi, what do you want to see this time around? Ten seconds remaining. Uh, a slower draft. I debated myself. <laughs> I thought we we're gonna see a much like uh, you know, get a little bit more time. I yeah. just went down to make tea. Didn't have time to actually wait for it to be done. Have to run back up. But do, uh, do they have a kettle yet in the BTS house? Uh, yeah, they did. Oh, but nice. I'm I'm back nice. back in the uh my my home now. So. Oh right right. No kettle Ten here. That was the that was the one thing I re well, one of the few things I remember Five from uh, TI4 NA Hub was microwaving my water so I could make a cup of tea. It was <laughs> sad times. All right, all right. So Sand King gonna be picked up again by Five Anchors. We got the Puck, Brew, Bane, Omni, and Winter Riven bands once again. I think Kunko was also banned in the previous game. So there you go. Dire uh, team pick. Same bands overall, Evil Corporation going to be going for the Ogre this time around. Uh, which I think definitely seems like a very good hero right now, especially in this kind of... I don't want to call it a hyper-carry meta necessarily, but there are a lot of really big late-game carries being played, and you throw a Bloodlust on them, and they just get to that point that much faster, right? Morphling, Dusa, Luna, uh, you, you name it. Yeah, he just does not only the late game very well he also does like the early game very well right because mm -hmm. it just helps you win those lanes so your carry not only hits harder late game but also gets more farm so yeah it, he, he's just amazing yeah also nice that it kind of i think one of the few things that ogre allows you to do and it's something that i think people were using spirit breaker for in previous patches is that you have a hero that fulfills some of the elements of being a position four hero in terms of roaming and lane pressure, but only really needs like a five. He can actually be the five in terms of buying support items. And yep. so from there, you can pick a greedier ranged four. You can pick your Visage or your Phoenix or something, you know, something like that, or Whatever, even a Rubik yeah. in your position yeah. four, and it kind of opens up your draft a little bit more in that way. For sure. Uh, Gyrocraft are picked up has been relatively popular recently. I would say that some of Gyro coming back and being more popular is probably the rise of you know, PL coming back to help deal, try and deal with Medusa a little bit, and maybe also Brewmaster as well becoming more popular. I feel like th there's a couple of players that seem to like the Gyro with. Uh, Plenty of points in missile and, and rocket barrage as a way of dealing with Brewmaster in the, the off lane, but Evil Corporation is going to be picking it up first two here. Bit of a throwback. I felt like Gyro got that, what I call the, the Ice Frog Notice Me buff, mm -hmm. where, I mean, he's getting buffed throughout the patch, but he also got the nice change to his rocket. The, with and the redirect. Sudden, yeah, well, the, it does like a ton more damage now. It used to be yeah. based on distance. Oh, right. But yeah. now, now it's like, uh, it just does a flat damage. It, it moves much faster, and yeah, it, it's just a very good spell at this point. So, and then people is like, oh yeah, he's also good at you know a bunch of other things like taking stacks and all that jazz. Yeah, they are on the dire side as well. So yeah. worth talking about the uh, the tri camp area on the dire being able to just kind of sit there and farm all three camps. You're right on top of your shrine. You're very very safe. Uh, so definitely expecting to see a little bit of that this game, or hoping to see a little bit of that this game to really get the gyrocopter accelerated, because gyro is the kind of hero where you're hoping to just be a little bit ahead of the enemy team's burst, right? You want to either you want to get to your BKB in a reasonable amount of time and just be able to run into the fights, or you're tanking up enough to the point where you survive the first volley of spells and then you just turn around and unleash hell. Uh, on everybody but to do that you need to be in the the right situation farm wise so we'll see yep, how he that's does for sure uh, do you like the mask of madness on gyro i've seen it a bit but i'm i'm still going back to the conversation from the previous Five game i like the remaining. like phase Aquila drum s and y just kind of tank up sort of a i think it, it really comes down to what role that. you're doing right if you're mm -hmm. if you're the one that's playing the i need to farm and carry my team then i like the mom much more but yep. then I think the other item you mentioned is 
more suited to just kind of run around and fight with your team. And that's also the strength of Gyro. It could do both. Yeah, that's that's true. I think it's part of why they pick it up early on here. Um, I don't know if the meta is going to get to the point where maybe we see Gyrocopter mid again. It is uh, certainly very annoying to deal with for certain certain matchups. But uh, I've actually seen it a couple of times uh, when yeah. you pair with like a Drow lineup. The Drow mm. takes a safe lane. Gyro takes mid, and it helps when you have the extra you know ten damage or so to flack people around. There was quite a bit of Drow at the summit. Right, I think it was. Well, I think Complexity was picking it a decent amount, and then a couple of other teams were also grabbing it here and there. Oh, the funny thing was that I was in the room when, I mean, Complexity felt like they could be EG, and mm -hmm. they lost the first two games during the group stage to EG, and then I think Kyle got super mad, picked out, and then they actually <laughs> won with that game where Z Freak. I don't know if you saw that game, but the he, Wyvern game where he went crazy, yeah, Phase Wyvern Oof. or Phase Midas. I think he. Decided to kill a Deso at a certain point in that game, but I was like, oh, we need MKP. So, and then, so that was the tri core of Drow, Wyvern, and a Slaughter support. And then they kept picking that combo like in, in the rest of the event, but then I think teams have figured out that strategy and play really well against it. So, I, I think that was like the highest moment of the Drow comp, the yeah. game that they won. And then ever since that, like it kind of just died. That on. was against EG's like Underlord, Lone Druid, uh, Dusa draft, right? They like picked some. It was three yeah, yeah, really it was immobile cores. Yeah, and there and and I think I remember people were saying it's like, oh, how do you kill this draft? And then Drow's like, or Kyle was like, no, we just picked Drow, and then we just out out damage you. Yeah. Meanwhile, there are, th there are things happening in this draft. We got an Oracle Huskar coming in for Evil Corporation. So Five seconds remain. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. It, it's it's a thing. Five anchors going for the Undying. Um, so let me let me talk about five anchors, three heroes so far. I I just hate this combination because now you have a four and five that has no split pushing potential or potential to deal with split push. And that's something that we came we saw out of five anchor themselves, right? It was a course that just constantly just send illusions down a lane, and normally you don't want your cores to be the ones that have to deal with split push because their their time is more valuable spent rising up the jungle or you know because you know most carries they have their own pattern like farming. Yeah from cam to cam and stuff like that. And the fact that you have to, let's say, walk to the other side of the map to, to counter push is no bueno. So normally you always pick up a four position that could counter push, whether it's Rasa with Aethershock, Wyvern with Splinter Blast, even Sanking. So unless this is an off lane and dying in position four Sanking, then five anchor don't have that ability to, to play against Evil Corp if Evil Corp wants a split push. Yeah. and. It's not even just about like winning the game through split pushing, Ten right? It's about the information gathered from uh, being forced to go and deal with pushing Five out the lanes. There's less room to move around. You've got less farming yeah. space. It's it's like you you have a wave in front of your tier two. You can't just ignore Maybe it and go smoke tank, right? You just gonna have to yeah. deal with it first. So yeah, gotta. I mean, you hear people talking about all the time just fixing lanes, right? Like I'm gonna go fix this lane, and then we'll yep. uh, we'll, we'll go do this or. Uh, you know, shove this, uh, and then we'll, you know, creates the creates the opportunity to do something. So they do have the Arc I mean, Warden this time. Yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. Like, if you have heroes like Arc Warden, Tinker, then you can get away Five with it to not have a, as many supports that could deal with it, because those heroes do just want to teleport to the tower and just farm. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think their plan is to have the SK Witch Doctor and Dying as the tri lane and just go and try and punch the... Oracle Huskar Ogre Trilane to death. Can you do can. that though? Can you actually punch I, I, into them? I don't I'm not know. sure. I, I'm I don't not, think so. I, you know, I can I can see. I think if you can go on the, I think the Huskar is is actually pretty susceptible. In the, I mean, let, let, let's play this game, game right. If you're the Huskar or if you're Evil Corp, who do you want to lane against? Ten hmm. seconds remaining. Like, um, I think you have a free lane against Lycan, right? If you get get the lane matchup. Remaining. Yeah, I think I think you want to. You do probably want to be up against like and uh, what, is and you, even what against... happens if you put the Huskar mid? Is he just is he safe there? Like, does does he care that much about Arc Warden? Arc Warden? I think he. I mean, the, the thing about Huskar, he generally beats everybody. I, I think the most dangerous yeah. lane is that I don't think he wants to be in the tri lane because I, I could see him actually having issues at level yeah. one or two. Yeah, I think you maybe want the Gyrocopter in the in the tri lane, and then you just put the Huskar somewhere where he can. 
just get some levels, right? As Huskar, sure, you can win your lane by throwing some spears, but what you're really playing for is multiple points in Berserker's Blood, get your arm lit, and then just yep. start running around the map and uh, being unkillable. Uh, they do have you know, a decent amount of physical damage now over on the five anchors side. Uh, I think the Witch Doctor with the Death Ward might even be quite helpful in this game. Uh, there's not that many ways to cancel it, so that's going to be some extra damage that Huskar's going to have to deal with, but is going to be think, Lycan doing most of the heavy lifting. Yeah, I think the Lycan final pick is something they really needed. Because if you look at, without without the Lycan, who's actually going to run to the back line and pressure this Oracle? The, I, I think the only way you beat a good Oracle Huskar combo is you, you have to have multiple heroes that go to the back line and make sure that Oracle is disrupted from his spell casting. And then the rest of the hero could deal with Huskar and so on and so forth. Um, that's why I think Trixie's Blink Dagger is also like super important. And I'm not sure if he's going to be able to find it in a good time this game. Um, pretty much is up to Nemphi and then Trixie to be able to get to the back line. Because if you don't get to the back line, it's GG. The Huskar is going to just, I think, out carry the. Oh, maybe not. Like, Topson's Arc Warden can actually punch pretty hard. So. Yeah. I wonder if he'll go for a. Like, that different of a build this game on the Arc Warden. Maybe a little bit more. Uh more pickoff focused or something on those lines uh one Shadow thing Blade? yeah Silver maybe Edge. so yeah one thing that i've actually been seeing on um and i guess shout out to shout out to godot for for this one he's been spamming arc warden in oz pubs recently and he's been rushing spirit vessel because okay it's, it's one of the few items left that when you use it when you use tempest double it actually still duplicates everything you get all the charges on the on the Tempest level. Is that even intended? Uh, who knows? But anyway. Um, so it's actually it actually ends up being very, very potent. And then after that he just buys Dagon. Dagon and Nullifier. Like Dagon E Blade, Nullifier, and just runs around zapping people. But it comes to mind this game because I think an extremely fast spirit vessel would be insanely strong against Can Oracle purge that off though? Uh yes, right? Okay, so maybe I, not. I think right? so. But well, actually, I don't know. Can can you actually get rid of? All right, let me look that up right now. Yeah, yeah. Just you, you, yeah. you find out and you let us know because I'm I'm not actually 100 percent sure how, what the the spell rules are on on a spirit vessel. I don't. Right. Gonna control F the spell. Dispellable with any dispel. All right. Okay. Well, there you go. Oh, that I guess that makes it a little bit a little bit weaker. But still, I mean, you're up against. Uh, yeah, it makes it a lot look. weaker, right? Because she just throws the fortunes in, and there goes your vessel charge. But you have free vessel charges because you're constantly oh, making them. Oh, with yeah, your, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you throw weapon. one, you throw one up, and then you wait for him to dispel it, and, and then you then throw, you throw, the, throw other the other one. Yeah, got him. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I could. I don't know. It, I think it depends on whether or not he's ever ever seen it. It's probably just something that Godot is doing in Oz pubs. So there you go. But. All right, so to answer your question of the musical lane, uh, Huskar is going to go mid, mm -hmm. and he is going to pressure uh, Arc Warden. And with one person here, namely the Ogre, I mean, we, last game we saw Thompson getting like solo kills, right? That's yeah. not going to happen. Look, when it comes to the laning stage, Ogre is like three people. I mean, he's got two heads, he's at least two people, and then he's got eight armor, so he's uh, definitely going to be a nuisance. Undying's going to come in and try and deal with him, but yeah, still going to be very annoying. Look at this. He's just then, he's just punching. Actually, he's a bit trapped by this creep wave. He needs to be careful. Oh, he's going to go oh, running into dead. that spark. He's just dead. Oh, no. Ogre, oh, that is not a good look. And now, bottom lane. Bit of damage getting thrown out onto the Oracle. Oh, man. Did he not anticipate the, the howl damage? Or... I don't know. I don't know. I think he took the creep wave. Yeah, he got he got body blocked like inside of the creep wave, way too much. That That's like when you walk look. into the dance floor thinking you're top shit, right? And you just trip. <laughs> That's kind of what just happened. Oh my up. goodness! The... Oh, did he get surprised by like soul rip damage? No, nope, I'm dying with still level one. And Raijin's gonna die here on the mid lane as well. Look at his flux damage because Ogre is being pressured away. That's a kill. Yeah, Alright, this, this is, is a disaster. Oh, oh, this, this lane is over. It's done. What do you what do you do now? I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this is just another disaster oh, laning phase from 
Uh, from Evil Corp. You know, unfortunately, I wasn't adminning the room for Fnatic when they got brooded super hard. Because I'm pretty sure that's the feeling that it was in that room. I was in VP's room when uh, Ramsey, like, two games in a row, just picked the mid brood and ran, ran all over Abed. Yeah, who, who was it that played brood against uh, Fnatic? Was it, was it OG? Uh, yeah, OG played on no tail. Yeah, oh. And Rocket Barrage, damage down bottom. Nymphian's in trouble. Can he get into the fog? Start salving up. Ooh. Looks like he will be able to. And he's going to be A-OK. -okay. A little bit of cask bouncing around here. Gyrocopter only has one point. Well, only one point in the Rocket Barrage and only enough mana for one more. Can they get the Witch Doctor? Nymphian going to come popping out, trying to split the damage a little bit. Peksu in some trouble, but he also makes it into the trees. And they're going to be A-OK. -okay. Nicely played by five anchors. What you said earlier about the levels of Huskar really applies to the Lycan as well. Lycan really finds himself stabilizing the lane once you have like level 5. Uh, level 3 of Pharaoh Impost like just gives you so much regen, you can withstand the lane. But right now he's being heavily pressured and the Undying Teleport in here definitely does not help his level gains. Oh, oh. Topson solving up here. Is he going to get cancelled? Ogre wants it. He is going to get... A little bit of a cancel uh -oh. there. Is he dead? No, I think I he's. Know, okay. I don't think he's so. He's okay. But... He's okay. Yeah. Interesting to see the point in bloodlust at level two. Um, I guess maybe feeling like he doesn't really have that much kill potential running around with the fire blast. He's just going to be focusing on getting these cores farming a little bit faster as early as possible. Top lane going right. kind of interestingly. Trixie getting decent farm, but also coming under pressure. I think he actually needs to be careful with the caustic because if he clears the wave super quickly, then. Uh, you know, Underlord just comes rushing back in. But I think he just wants farm. Like he, yeah. he knows he's gonna get fire. Like melee versus firestorm. I know we we say melee versus Cossack is hard, but no, firestorm is the Illusion. the true trump. The, the real lane killer. <laughs> yeah. Selfish. By the way, uh, looking at Topson's uh, inventory again, looks like he's gonna go for that uh, hurricane pike. Yeah. I but... mean, it's just so good for stats. Yeah, I have seen people like get the Aquila and then disassemble it for Pike later on, but yeah, sure. the, the, the stat build just seems so nice. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to maybe survive some of these ganks early on. And Arc Warden is actually surprisingly tanky, especially once you get to level 15. You take the 350 health talent, you're sitting up around like 2k, 2k plus health. Okay. Memphi, oh, a little bit of trouble, gonna summon up the wolves here to try and soak some rocket barrage. Nicely played. Now, a little bit of a turnaround, bit of damage getting thrown out, but they're not really going to be able to do anything to the gyro. This top lane feels like it's kind of balanced on knife edge. Both of these heroes are both ticking low. It's going to take like one good two caustic and a burrow strike, or uh, just getting caught in a firestorm at the wrong time to. Yeah, well, oh, maybe like Trixie. This. <laughs> Pretty sure, like, if anybody walks in with a stun, any stun, they, they just find a kill. But the supports are so taxed, like, they need to help their cores elsewhere. Trixie's gonna shry himself back to full. Um, is he gonna pick up a bottle? We, we see a lot of offlaners, you know, just go to the secret shop, pick up the bottle, pick up the, the rune, and then you're, you know, super regen. Yeah, very popular on Brewmaster. I'd say that's like every, yeah. every game of offlane brew I see, people are getting. Uh, getting the bottle for sure. Oh, I'm dying. Running in here. A little bit of flux damage. Actually, a lot of flux damage, but can they get the turnaround? Huskar running back forward and Topson in oh. trouble. Got some phase boots looking for the turnaround. Can they get the uphill hits? One more is going to oh. do it. He gets it wow. off at the last moment. Can they get the undying? Uh, nope. Looks like OKC okay, are going to say so long. Yo. Yeah. That was a super good man up by Topson because if he runs, he dies to the fire, right? And yeah. he recognizing that he just turns around. He said, like, I got phase boots. I'm coming in. No uphill miss. Yeah. Seeing the supports mid, they do try and get some damage on the gyrocopter. But uh, not really going to do that much. In terms of the overall farm, it does seem like five anchors doing better across the board. Uh, but, you know, not, not that far ahead necessarily in the lanes. Though I think the expectation was that Evil Corp were going to win this mid lane. And it yes. has, has not happened. So. I actually think that they're just only ahead because of the, the kills that they got, right? First blood Pretty and, much. and two, three kills, yeah. So now that the Lycan is like pretty decently level, I'd like to see them to leave Lycan for a bit and just help out the other lanes. Ooh, I say that though, they're gonna make six. it go on the bottom. 
Such a nice timing for the Lycan doing good damage, but Flynn's just gonna try and TP out. Oh, he's A-OK, -okay, I think. Yeah. Wait, he didn't TP into the fountain. Why is he here? Why is he here? That was a picnic TP. He had to pop a salve. Oh my, okay, at least he survived. At least he survived. No, the enemy team doesn't know. <laughs> they, they, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, fine, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. If you just echo slam the jungle, they don't know. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Doom a creep? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But, uh, all right, still, Lycan gonna be fairly difficult to lane against from this point forward. It was a last pick. I think it's very well positioned this game. Even the lockdown from Evil Corp just kind of sucks against Lycan, right? They have disarm, I guess. It's like quote unquote the best uh, lockdown, really. Yeah, I mean they've got the Maybe they, firestorm. And they've pit. got the pit, but uh, he can just kind of scoot around that, and then there's gonna be one point in fire blast for a while. <laughs> so right. It's it's tough. What kind of build are you wonder, hoping to see from the like? Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was gonna bring up here. Like, I, I feel like the Necrobook build obviously is very good for for pressuring, and the fact that it has a purge there might kind of brings it over the top. Yeah, Oracle's Having a purge blocked, against Oracle, he's dead. This is quite nice. Yeah, I think the like the mana burn is also even just the potentially the last will against like the gyro. Very nice. Okay, so, yeah. Pretty fortunate rune. Gets the illusion, can soak the next rocket barrage potentially, and yeah, Flynn's Meister just gonna back himself out. He As only... a final note, like you never want to stack a bunch of damage on Lycan and just to get this arm. So yeah, you know, Necrobook lets you kind of spread a lot of your net worth to different sources of damage. So this is nice. Oh, a bit of trouble for the Huskar on mid. Flux gonna get deactivated by the move clicking oh Ogre, oh but they goodness. do have the jump forward. Peksu with the wraparound. They've also got the heal. Underlord now coming in for the TP. Looks like they will get the Witch Doctor, but can they save the Huskar? Will not be able to. One last touch is gonna do it, and now the Tombstone doing big work. Topson gonna be looking for yet another kill. Oracle only level four. Does manage to throw out the disarm, but I don't know if that's really helping all that much as Undying is running rampant over this mid lane. Double kill so far, one more punch is gonna do it. Finds a triple, Flens coming in, but he's only level five. Two points up in the Body rocket blocks. barrage. Body blocks going to work. Now Peksu comes oh. in again, and the paralyzing cast doing so much work. Gyrocop is gonna fall, doesn't get the ultra. Can they give it to the Undying? One more punch, could have gotten a rampage, but oh well. Still a huge win for five anchors on the mid lane. Was that 5-0 yeah. on the mid lane? It, like literally everybody on Evil Corpse died mid, right? Oh uh, no, Witch Doctor died. But yeah, literally every every player died. Okay, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, when you look at Huskar lineup, it's all like group up, take the first Roche. You have a timing with your, I don't know, was it the, the solo crest on Huskar plus the... Yeah, what like, is it? Uh, ar it's like armlet, armlet, armlet halberd, or it's, it's, yeah, armlet solar armlet crest. Armlet sol solar crest treads, and you just go with Aegis, and you yeah, get a mech there. on your underlord. You know, yeah, yeah. You so don't much have any for of that, that. Time anymore. It, yeah, it's, it's just done. So I, I've never seen a plan B for Huskar work, and I doubt that we're gonna see one today. So, not to take away any hype from this game, but I just don't know how the hell Evil Corp's gonna win this game. Also, the the gyrocopter is also not doing that well either. I mean, he's he's fourth. Yeah, he's uh, fourth from the bottom on net worth. He's down, he's down chilling with the supports. What happened? Well, right I there. mean, OKC I just got an ultra kill, so maybe that's a little... A little deceptive. Ooh! Oh, that homing missile just cancelling the epicenter in time, but... I mean, OKC is just charging in here. He's actually going to be the one going for the spirit vessel this game. Well, try to heal himself up a little bit. Might be feeding away a bit of a streak. Nice for own me, and now Trixie also in some trouble. Does manage to get a good burst strike down onto the low ground. Gonna save some of that blink dagger money. Over at mid lane, looks like the Huskar brought down. Trixie's still getting chased, but it's only uh, Oracle who's throwing out some harassment. Did you happen to catch what happened mid? No. Tops but, and I mean, you can, I just look, you can just look at all of yeah. these uh, <laughs> spark rates and just kind of imagine. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Midas is finished. I like these phase boots. Not not the most common pickup necessarily on the the arc warden, but you know, nice little bit. I guess the like we've said, Evil Corp, their catch is somewhat lacking. Their lineup is very much about just rolling up onto a building and and sieging it down. And so if you've got that little bit of extra mobility, I think it actually helps a lot. And the damage. I, also, I mean, it's it's such a dumb thing to say, but if you just think about it. Damage is nice, right? Like early yeah. on. 
And look look at how much damage it's hitting for right now. Oh, He's hitting gyro. for like over 100. Nice TP out again from Flensmeister, but... Yeah. Still, and that is not what you want to be doing as Gyrocopter at this point of the game. And for Arc Warden, like, the fact that you could have a double damage rune every five, 50 seconds, essentially, or you're... You know, even if your illusion is not casting spells, it's still hitting hard. So I really appreciate this game. I, I, people are always like, oh, we got to rush Midas on Arc Warden. You don't really have to. The fact that you, like, once you pick up one kill with the Fade Speeds, it's already, like, you know, better than getting the Midas two minutes earlier. Yeah, and if you're microing well, you know, you can be farming, or finish off farming a camp or two with the Tempest Double while you're also going sure, for a lane, sure. that kind of thing. Alright, Evil Corp are going to be able to take their first tier 1 tower of the game down here on the bottom side. So they open things up a little bit. They do have the armlet now up on the Huskar. So he's starting to hit that little bit of a timing that we were talking about. Thompson with the straight up, no cares, TP out on the mid lane. So they see some heroes there. They are going to jump in here onto the Lycan up top. But this may have been a little bit more, fighting up a little bit more uh -oh. than they can chew. Oh. Don't fight the Huskar. He's fine, right? Yep. He's, he's Huskar. He's got his point in inner vitality. Heals right back up to full. Unfortunately, Gyrocopter dying on the mid lane. Trixie with the blink dagger reveal, it looks like. Let's find that kill. Alright. How soon is Roshan on the agenda? It is right now. I mean, that's their timing. You got you, you cannot give away Roshan to five anchors. If you give away the first Rosh, you're done. So this is pretty much... A do or die situation. This is for the, the, the this is not working. Look at this. Huskar is uh, he is does not have enough HP. Unable to anybody buying medallion on the team? No. So five anchors like okay, we'll just walk in and take it. Thanks. Yep. Like this is a risky fight though. You walk in there, there's a firestorm on top of you. You could get ugly really fast. There's a mech finish on Underlord as well. Yeah, they got the level seven on the gyro, so there is a call down ready to go. But they are gonna have to oh, press dude. through these spark wraiths. This is about to get scary. Un Undying does have his tombstone up in just a second, and I think that might be the big ability here for five anchors. Just needs to put it in a good oh, position, and it is placement. up on the high ground. Great place to put it. They're splitting up the fight a little bit. Gyrocopter trying to come up the river, but the Paralyzing Cask also bouncing around, and now they've got Nemphi coming through. Burrow Strike going to catch out the Oracle. He won't be able to save anyone in this fight. A couple more auto attacks should bring him down. Flensmeister split up from the Oracle. Huskar just going to dive in deep, knowing that he doesn't have any way to get out of this. Does manage to find the kill on Thompson. Another Burrow Strike through onto the Ogre, and that is going to be yet another team wipe on the mid lane. And on the mid lane. Thompson with the moral support from beyond the grave. And five anchors head straight in to finish up this Roshan. So, Gyro had a very good call down. Hit three heroes and he walked in in the middle, flat cannoning everybody. From that point on, I thought it looked pretty good until he killed the Necrobook and then took like half his HP down to last one and he just died. So, and then of course that Tombstone placement. My god, there was nothing that they could have done. Like, nobody on this team hits Tombstone well apart from Huskar, but he was like caught in the paralyzing cask. So that, that tombstone placement, Dyer's I think, won him that fight. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even see if there was an epicenter in that fight or not. It, it was tough for Evil Corp because they, like, he only committed the tombstone once he knew that there were three heroes, like, kind of trapped over on this side. And then the gyrocopter is trying to kind of wrap into the river. But you look at the right. fight recap from that last fight, and Underlord did 500 damage. That was it. Oof, they jump in on the dirge, and he's gone. They still have to be careful. Okay, okay see ya. Uh, maybe a little bit surprised, but should still be able to hold on to this reasonably well. And the chip damage continuing to add up from the spark rates. The Huskar needing to be careful. The Lycan ultimate backup in 20 seconds time, and I think that's really what Nemphi's just waiting for right now. All right, Ev Evil Corp just need to play Caveman Dota. Just run down mid at this point and rely on the strength of your Huskar. Get some armor I, I don't think going. there's any other play. Oh, jump in, burrow through, Trixie. Uh -oh. Looks like he should be okay. At the same time, they're taking this opportunity to jump out of the Underlord. The fight's splitting up badly. The call down doing a bit of work to open up some more space, but one more touch is going to do it. Underlord brought down. They bought the time for their Lycan ultimate to come back up. And with that, Evil Corp are going to have to run for the hills. Oh, and they're even catching up under the Gyrocopter. Flensmeister going to be brought down once again. Oracle did have the ultimate available, but I don't think any way that it would have saved him. There's even more wolves. Like, found an illusion rune somewhere along the along the way. 
So there's two things I want to confirm, right? Trixie gets jumped on, he's gonna die he's to dead. fire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Huh? Oh. Huh? Let him take out. So they took they they took away the purge effect from uh Spark Rage, right? Yes. Okay. Because I remember that used to be one of the best way to deal with Huskar is like keep purging his uh inner vitality. Yep. But now you can still do it from your necro power, so. I, I don't know if the players are actually going for that. Uh oh. Ryojin. Oh my god, needed to ult from that one. That spare vessel doing so much work. Yeah. That hurts. 100 second cooldown expended and not even gaining that much health back because of the spirit vessel. He's purged it off now, but is it a little bit too late? He turns around, he gets the life steal going, <laughs> and now he just picked up a double kill. Uh -oh. And now Nemphi also in trouble. One more hit's gonna do it. Nemphi brings him down. He does have the Aegis available. Is there some help on its way? Topson does not have a TP. Looks like he just headed his way up towards the top side of the map. And they are gonna be able to catch up to Nemphi once again. Yeah, we'll be able to summon the Necro Book, but I think that might just be a little bit more gold fed. Flensmeister needs to be careful that he doesn't oh! die here. One more hit's gonna do it. Trixie jumps through. They do lose the like and own me. Just gonna go for the evac. Helicopter brings them back out. What is up with these players and not being able to just TP all the way back to their fountain? First it was the gyro. Nick, dude. Uh, can't you just... Well, whatever. Double whatever. click? Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Is it double click like brings you the fountain? I, I don't know. Yeah. That was really good caveman dodo. That was truly 20 IQ caveman. That's exactly what they needed too. Like I'm not, it sounds like I'm flaming them, but they just need to keep running down mid. And they got a lot out of that, right? They got the Aegis, they got a couple of kills. And yeah. Spare Vessel shows how strong it is against Huskar. Yeah, that except OKC okay, doesn't have any charges now. So yeah, gotta, I gotta replenish that a little bit with some kills. And they're just coming straight back to mid. Topson has been farming pretty much this entire time, so we're still on this Arc Warden trajectory, but... Uh, that, that, like you said, this is this is kind of the only play. Yeah. Even Gyrocopter just gonna be looking... He's just trying to pick up Assange. He's like, I just want some more health. I want to be able to cast my spells and not die to last will. Oop, they uh -oh. found out the Arc Warden. Phase boot to safety. Tombstone getting dropped down. Ryujin does jump in here. He wants this Tombstone Gold. Wants the Tempest oh double gold. Wants He's not dying. to oh die, God. and there's the death oh ward. God. Nice positioning from Pexu over in the trees, and Ryujin hoping to heal up here. I think he should be okay. Yeah, he's fine. Inner vitality, good ability. Ooh. But meanwhile, Nemphi with the drive by, looking for the kill on the Oracle. There you go, the call down coming in as well. This time around, Huskar does not have that ultimate to save him. Can they get enough damage done? Topson actually committing in perhaps a little bit too deep. Nemphi, no ultimate left, but Trixie with another burst strike. Own me, pretty much the only one surviving. He's got tons of damage from the Atrophy Aura, however. <laughs> Might be able to right-click this down, but no, Nemphi finds the triple. The level 3 Necro doing a ton of work. And that will end up being a 4 for 3 overall. And Nemphi in that team fight doing exactly what I talked about during the draft, which is you cut in from the back line, and you cut off that Oracle. And you saw how quickly Oracle or how quickly Huskar died without the Oracle support. He actually just dies super fast. Yeah. And he didn't I even mean, have to commit his hero, right? He like he put his hero up here and then just sent in all, he sicked all his minions on him. I think there was like uh, the purge from I think the range and then yeah, yeah, just the minions itself just took down. I mean, what the hell is Oracle going to defend <laughs> himself against four creeps, right? You can't even disarm. I mean, you can, but it doesn't do anything. Yeah. You disarm one of them and you cry quietly to yourself, pretty much. <laughs> You ask you ask your underlord to please pit of malice all the all the creeps. Yeah, but then once the pit ends, he just <laughs> yeah, runs super fast. Yeah, yeah. Then they're, then they're still too. at more than max move speed. So there you go. Oh man, this game is. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a little statistic. Like this just feels really fun to watch because I know Evil Corp has like a sub five percent chance, but it's still seeing super fun. Like Huskar trying so hard. Yes, yeah, so far away. Can we pause? Can we get can we get Jackie Mao in here? Can we, <laughs> can we sub a player in? <laughs> like This is this oh, is man. this is Jackie a Mao. It's a Jackie Mao game. Sure. No, Jackie Mao will straight up queue up uh, a, a divine rapier at this point. Oh, they go for it. Oh. They want Nemphi. They got him. Nice. That is that is a big kill. Can they find OKC in the trees? Ooh, chose a good spot. He's gonna be okay. I mean, I say sub 5%, but you gotta keep in mind that Topson has been dying pretty much every single team fight. He's 8 3 and, and 15, but he, he's picked up a ton of deaths recently. Hmm. So, it's not completely over. 
And they're running at buildings again, so... Yeah, he's just kind of going the same build again. I, I was wondering whether he would go for the Maelstrom this game, because I guess it's it's like a tiny bit less value against the Huskcraft. Still, of course, really good at farming and really good at pushing out waves, and I think that's really what they picked it for, right? That's what the Arc Warden's job is here, to just apply constant pressure, be a nuisance. Eventually, once the map opens up enough and he has the right items, he'll just yep. be spell pushing non-stop and... Uh, uh oh yeah. Here it comes. Yo, Caveman Dota alert in the bottom lane. They don't have a glyph. Huskar's on the high ground. This is a pretty well-structured fight. They're going to have to find a way to get the Lycan in to the back lines. Trixie waiting in the trees. Does go forward with the burst strike. Four staff himself back out. Jump in. Ryujin's going deep, and they do find Peksu. Immediately takes uh -oh. him out. Trixie's still in the trees. And now OKC also going to be taken out. Ryujin is still alive. Now the Oracle Ultimate going to be coming through. Topson doing his best with the Arc Warden. And now they jump in as well. Can they find the Oracle? They do manage to get that kill. Huskar healed back up a little bit. Topson gets jumped on, but really nice Hurricane Pike usage. Forces him back out. And Empty taking some damage. Turns tail and runs. We'll be able to summon up his Necrobook in just a second. And Trixie is owning this fight. Another round of Burrow Strikes controlling everybody. They've managed to find the Huskar. Just sending the summons forward. Can they actually find this? The tier 3 taking so much damage, and Trixie actually forced to buy back in the midst of all of that. That was great for Evil Corp, right? They got buybacks, they didn't lose the Huskar. Yeah. I mean, that's all you asked for. He's got 2k up, so he's queuing up now Satanic. They're doing it. Yep, they I are. mean, maybe maybe the decision for Arc Warden, do you think he could have gotten the Rex if he didn't come back? Probably not, right? He just Probably doesn't not. have enough damage. Yeah, I don't so. think so. Like, he well. He hits, he hits kind of hard, but not that hard. And they, they really yep, so. needed him to de to defend, I think. Otherwise, the tier 3 is just gone. And this and is, I, I think, a good point to revisit what I brought up during the draft is where Witch Doctor and Undying just don't simply have the spells to push out waves. And I'm not saying that, you know, they, they need to, like, nuke the wave to, to stop the push, because no hero could really do that. But if the wave was, let's say, pushed out much further than it was, then That's Evil more Corp would have... Yeah, Evil Corp would have needed 20 extra seconds, and that 20 extra seconds would have been Arc Warden pushing your tier 3 instead of you getting your tier 3 push. So it's yeah. just like a bunch of small stuff, but it really matters when, you know, every second counts. Evil Corp are rolling for the uh, the super fast rush respawn here, kind of. Or oh, they're looking for a pickoff. They're going to head on through. They did get that Lycan pickoff earlier, and they would... Not mind getting another one here. Lycan queuing up BKB, definitely going to be very important for an MP to be able to just oh, they see them. hard commit. Oh, they see Topson. He does have the pike, but he doesn't manage to make oh, it down no. to the low ground. He's going to try for the TP out. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Even if they got the top security, though, look at where the creep waves are. So they, they really can't. But that might have been Roche, right? If Topson's yeah. dead. So not, not necessarily game straight away from that pickoff, but definitely... Very, very nice to have. Got a four staff picked right. up on the ogre. I haven't checked item progression a little bit, actually. Should probably have a quick look. You're talking about the satanic on the Huskar. Uh, gyro. Not even going to finish the SNY, just looking for a BKB. So just trying to tank up. And Huskar just deciding to quickly backdoor this tier one. Because why not? Backdoor cheat. <laughs> Alright, what, what are five anchors going to do here? I feel like Topson could start playing. If they had a bit more vision down around this part of the map, he could be playing down here and taking yeah. this tier one really, really easily. But they need to move the supports out into that position and uh, actually get those wards down. The warding situation well, is not looking great for five anchors. They've only got one ward on yeah, the map. Yeah, yeah. And Topson doesn't have the BOTs yet, so he isn't really like playing the full strength of Arc Warden, right? The map strength. Now yeah. Roshan is up, and both teams knows it. So that's where both teams has to play in the in the next spot. Checking quickly on the, the dire support. So they have a smoke. The last time they kind of had to funnel down a ramp because they just couldn't position themselves well enough, fast enough. This is where having a smoke on a support is really light, nice. But they're going to just walk straight in. Firestorm, okay. baby. Yeah, and they're going to just take it. Uh oh. Asia's cheese on Huskar. How do you beat that? Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. I guess five anchors just relying on the strength of their high grounds. We're going to have to see if that's Yo, enough. I call this game sub 5%, but I mean, Evil Corp is just running at them, and Five Angers is not reacting properly. They're just they're just kind of falling back to the strength of their split push, it looks like, but yeah, everything getting cleared out pretty quickly here. 
Tier 2 is still alive. Nemphi waiting over in the trees. They're not even really setting up any any opportunities. I think this is where you really start to see the... The Undying did a lot for them in the early game, but this is where he falls off super hard as a 4, right? If you have not even something that can necessarily push out waves, which you've been talking about, but I think just having another hero to potentially cash or initiate is a really big deal, because it's all on the Sand King's shoulders at this point, right? Like, Sand King's showing bottom. Evil Corp have not a care in the world in terms of this push. Well, I mean, they've also got an Aegis on the Husk guy, so he doesn't really care, but... Um, Right. There's there's no I mean, other I, threat anywhere else. Undying's items is really good for this phase of the game. Like having blade mail so he he can't get jumped by Huskar. Mm -hmm. Having the vessel, obviously we we've seen it do a lot of work. But you're absolutely right. Just lacking the the threat potential. But look at what Trixie's doing right now. Trixie's saving the game right now in the mid lane. Yep. Cuts like the wave. They just yeah. have to clear this one, but they are heading bottom. They want this tier three. There is a glyph available, but it's not going to be used. Now they don't have that bonus armor. What can they really do? Check out the bubble. Thompson does need to go and grab some mana in just a second, and Ryujin does not care. He knows that his Oracle has his <laughs> he just back. He stands there. Yeah, I mean, hands off the keyboard. You dude, look at Oracle go. and you hover False Promise, and you can see exactly what he's doing here. He's just making sure that he's just in range. They are going to jump through, throw out a little bit of harassment. And they okay. do have the magnetic field coming up in just a second. Thompson also with his ultimate available soon. They don't have a crew wave anymore. Yeah, they've got the backdoor protection. They forced to have him in. They forced to have him out. All right, another bubble going out. I don't know, Huskar. This isn't really something you want to be committing to too hard, is it? They get the Arc Warden. Tempest double dead, but still, no creep wave. No yep. progress. That that Trixie play where you cut off the mid creep wave, yep, paying off right now. And then look at how playing Memphi. Memphi is now threatening to force some TP back. And if he forces anybody like a core to TP back, then they've successfully defended. And Trixie's hunting, right? He's looking. He's looking for that TP cancel. He's looking for, yep, create some kind of opportunity here. So Pillar is back, base defended. They did lose the tier three, but whatever, right? Yeah, they're the gonna they're gonna lose the shrines, but yeah, given the given that they're stalling against an Aegis, and they've actually made some pretty significant progress on stalling that, I think that's. They're going to be pretty happy with it overall. Oh. Yeah, so there's about two and a half minutes to Aegis. And Evil Corp needs to regroup fast and just, like, come back. But I don't think they can. They're so top and solutions to saving up top. Oh, He's finally got the BOTs. So that's the... Oh, that yeah, that is such a big item for, for this stage of the game. Is that, that's kind of like plus one lanes shoved out for free, right? Yeah. Like. Or just having an extra hero on the map. That's kind of how you th could think about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, MPKB up on the Lycan. What do you think he goes for next? Maybe just AC? Kind of a... Or maybe, maybe like a... Uh, maybe get a Basher or something. I don't know if you really need it. Could be, no, he, could he, be handy. He's he's getting the BKB not to fight the, the Huskar. He's getting BKB to chop down everybody else on the yeah. back line. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, the Doctor looking very dead. Pexu in some trouble. Trixie creating a bit of space with the Burrow Strike, but Ryujin is right into the base, and this time around, Backdoor Protection not going to save them. They're actually going to try for the trade up top. Nemphi popping the ultimate, pops the Necrobook. Charges straight in. Underlord in some trouble, getting fluxed up. Does manage to purge it immediately, TPing back into his fountain. Well, of Rack's already gone down bottom. Trixie doing his best to stall here on the mid lane as the tier 3 is getting chunked down. There is going to be a Rax for Rax trade, but they are not leaving just yet. Huskar standing strong, pops the Satanic, heals back up a little bit. They're going to jump in. They're going for the Ogre of all things on Trixie. Does he have a buyback available? I'm not so sure. OKC okay, in a little bit of trouble. Thompson, that's his real hero in the midst of this fight. He's going to be able uh -oh. to force staff himself away using the Tempest double. Nicely played there, but still, they've only popped the one life on the Huskar. Can they bring him down a second time? The Oracle still waiting with the False Promise in the wings, helping to keep him alive here. Arc Warden still laying out with the right clicks. Flensmeister in trouble. They are going to be able to pass the cheese over to him, keep him alive. Another burst strike from Trixie. Really doing a ton of work for his team here in this game. And now Nemphy popping the ultimate, charging in, but they do have that ultimate from the Oracle. Keeping the Huskar alive. I don't know if they can kill this raid boss, and Gyrocopter is still just flacking from the side. Trixie gonna go in with another burst strike. Can they finish the Ogre at least? Looks like they should be able to. Not much like an ultimate left. One more hit's all he's got, and now Nemphi gonna get kited around a little bit as Huskar is just going crazy inside of the base. But he's split up from his team. Is this too far? Ogre buying back. Nemphi getting isolated. Ooh, a couple more touches are gonna do it. He's brought down. They've got buybacks available on the Radiant side. Thompson doing his best to hold it. Buyback from the Lycan, but no ultimate for 20 seconds. 
Holy shit, this fight, man. <laughs> but Ryojin, the Ray Ball, still goes strong. They couldn't actually kill the Oracle. Oracle positioned himself super well. He needed to dodge the Lycan, and he needed to just dodge the Paralyzing class. He, he played around both. Now the buyback's coming out. Ryojin, they're going on him. He doesn't have any support. The Oracle has ported home. Ryojin will die here, unless he can actually get the TP out. But the TP's in the backpack. And now Real Arc warding down. Nemphi in trouble, just getting right clicked. I'm just kidding. He's going to man fight and just win the man fight. On the right side, it's going to be uh, Sand King trying to make himself out. He's on the cliff. Can they actually see him? Firestorm? Nope. Ooh, he's good. But base in trouble. Man. They can't yeah. get Megas. There is still a tier 2 up top. Pexu just 3 shot. He's Who cares gone. Megas? Tier 4, dude. Yeah, let's tier go. 4s. Let's go. Underlord's got 160 damage. He's hitting pretty hard. One tier 4 down. Second tier 4 coming up. And... Oh man, this is not looking good. Five anchors charging in, doing everything that they can, but they just can't focus the Huskar. He's still oh, got the Satanic. God. He's healing back up to full tricks. He needs another burst strike. But now the Oracle is here, and I don't think there's any way for them to stop the Huskar train. It's rolling through. Trixie is desperately trying to find some kind of a chance, but with their Ancient just about to drop, five anchors will be taken oh, wow. to a game three. Even though I hate Huskar, I'm just so happy to see this lineup actually win because 20 minutes ago, like, you gotta keep in mind, Thompson got a dub first blood double kill mid lane. It was five people dead in the mid lane as well, like, what, 10 minutes in, and we're just saying, like, there's just no way. They missed all their timing. The first Roshan even went to five anchors. The, the, like, the gyro was so sad, right? The yeah, gyro everything that needed to go right for Evil Corp did not go right. It was like the worst Huskar game ever. And then they did it. They just came and dodo down mid hmm. or bottom. They got some really nice pickoffs without that much catch. I think that was the the biggest thing. Huskar, right place, right time, coming out of fog. No, you know that that bottom kill where they got the Lycan, right? And Lycan was in a in a pretty good position at that point. There was no opportunity for him to TP out or anything like that. Uh, Huskar really got got his items going. Good positioning from the Oracle as well. I think part of that is that the there's only, it's the Sand King who kind of has to find him in the back lines along with the Lycan, and he he just somehow managed to uh, elude capture all the way through the mid to late game portion. I mean, and, the big yeah. difference, remember how, how quickly Orga went down the jungle fight where yeah. there was so many pathway for the Sand King and the uh, Lycan to come in? But if you let an Orga, or rather a Lycan, or no, a Huskar team set up like on your low ground, it suddenly becomes very obvious. There's only two ways you can go in, right? You have to go through the go through the Huskar, or you have to wrap around. And as long as Oracle recognizes that and stands in a very opportune pattern and spot, then he just doesn't get killed. So I think for Four Anchor to beat that push, they just have to fight them out the base and and use smoke to to their advantage. But evil court, man! Holy shit! I'm so happy for this Huskar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really good stuff. I guess they. It does seem to be that maybe the laning stage is a little bit of their Achilles heel. Lane's not quite going the way that they've been expecting uh, so far in this series, but we'll have to see if that changes at all for Game 3. Lobby's probably already up and we're itching to go, so let's move on forward.